Hello everybody, it's Andy here from AIM Media Games. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up texture IDs in Blender. So when you easily transfer that over to Substance Painter, it makes it more simple and more streamlined to apply textures to different parts of your detailed model. So without further ado, let me show you how. So I'm going to add a few different cubes into the scene. We're going to go with one, two, and three. So we've got three different cubes. We're going to apply a single texture to each one of these. So just a single texture, and then they're all going to share the same texture data. So we're going to go and add a material cube texture. And we want, so this currently is set up on, I believe, the top one. But we want all of them to share the same. So we're going to shift left click make sure the last one that we select is the one that we want to link the materials to the others. And we're going to do control L and then do link materials. So now this, these three cubes are all sharing the same material data as the top one. The next step, we need to UV unwrap these. So we're going to select each one of the cubes, go to UV editing. We're going to click on synchronize top left. <clears throat> From here, we are going to uh, just do a simple basic unwrap. I'm going to do Smart UV Project and then click OK. That'll do us for the purpose of the tutorial. It's not always recommended to do it that way, but just for the tutorial, it's perfectly fine. Um, so now that we've unwrapped this, we can go to our Material Shading. And actually, no, we'll go to Texture Painting. My mistake. I'm going to click New. I'm going to call this our cube um, ID grid uh, ID colors and then we're going to do our shading next so now that we have a texture applied we can go to shading and we can select that texture so we're going to shift a image texture <clears throat> and then plug our color into base and on, on here we want our the one that we just created which is our cube id colors and then go to texture painting and we can see here that we have all of our uh, cubes set up with with the ability to paint on the cubes themselves okay so what we want to do is we want to make sure we link these objects so we're going to go to object mode, select these and control J. So they're all the same. We're going to select the bottom one, press free for face selection, and then press L to select the bottom one and then go to texture paint. From here, we can right click, select color. So let's just do RGB, so red, green, blue. And then we go to paint bucket and then we click on fill or mask, sorry which is this button next to texture paint and then left click. So that's white. So we want uh, red and then we do the same again. We go to edit mode, left click on this face, press L, go back to texture painting, right click. So we want green now for RGB and then we can left click and then we'll do it one more time. So we go to edit mode, left click on this face, L, and then we go to texture paint and then we go to blue and then left click. So we have red, green, blue. And then if we see here on our UV grid, <coughs> we have the blue box, we have the red box and we have the green. So now if we go back to modeling and select our colors, you can see here that it's all set up for us. So let's select this object. Let's go to file, let's go to export, let's go to FBX. And we're going to name this to, I've already got one, so I'm going to select the one I just created, this one, and export. So that'll overwrite that one for me. So we'll go into Substance Painter, now that we've done that, and we go to file, new, and leave it at 2K is fine. We're going to get our RGB cubes, we're going to open. And we can see here we have our tower of cubes that are all different colors. So we've got the red one, the green one, and the blue one. We're going to go to our bake for our baking maps. Make sure we have ID checked. And go to super sampling, set that to 16. Dilation to zero. 
and then click Bake. So here we have <clears throat> our UVs uh, set up all or baking all of our maps, which is done. So we've got a normal world space ID, ambient inclusion, curvature, position, and thickness. Once we've done that, we can go to return to painting. And the next step we want to do, let's make it look a little bit more prettier with better reflections and better specular. So now that we've done that, we need to go to texture set settings. We need to go to blender. We need to go to texture paint. Um, we can see here we have a little asterisk next to the image. And um, we're going to click on that. When we click on that, we can go down to save as. We go to desktop. I'm going to select the one that I did earlier just for testing and then click save image. That'll overwrite that for me. And then I can go back into substance. I can go to add bottom import resources, add a resource, a desktop, and then we want my cube grid, which is this one Then click open, set that to texture and import. So here we have my cube paint ID and here we have our uh, ID color map. So we're going to go and drag that onto there, go to layers, delete layer one. And now if we go to our smart materials and hold control and then left click and drag, something will happen and it will see, it will show us those IDs. So we have R, G and B. So we can place these materials, which will automatically mask it from the other ones. So if I do the top one, you can see here that, that we've got that red texture on top. And if I do bronze armor on the green, you can see now that we have a different material on the one below. And if we do, let's do a bleached copper on the bottom one. So that's a simple way of having a little bit more control over the texturing without having each cube with a separate material that you then have to link up in your game engine. With this one, you're gonna have four maps. You're gonna have your normal, your base color, your roughness and your metallic. If you had another material, you'd have another set of base colors, roughness, metallic and normals. And if you had another material, so that'd be four, eight, 12 in total, um, and, and if you've got a lot of components that have different materials or different textures to them, this can start to get a little bit out of hand and you'll end up with like a 300 megabyte um, file just for textures, which isn't really best for optimization. So now that we've done that, I'll show you one more way of doing this. So if I delete all three of these and we pop these textures in, so let's just do random free. If we then, we can see here that we've they've all got the the top one because it's at the top of the layer stack. So this is like layers on an onion. So you've got the top layer of the onion, the, the layer below and the layer below that. So anything that's at the very top will always show through and then it will take priority for the one below. So if we do this and then turn off the top one, you can see then it's going down to copper one. So how do we now separate these into those three colors? So we're gonna select copper red, right click, go to add mask with color selection. And this will give us an option to use our pick color. And when we click that, we have our RGB and we can left click. And now it's selected this one only. It doesn't have to be red, green, blue. It can be pink, yellow, purple. It doesn't, this is just because it's easier to do it this way for tutorial sake. So it can be any color you want. If you want pink, you can have pink. If you want pink with yellow spots, you can have pink with yellow spots. So the next thing we're gonna do is the same on the copper, right click, add mask of color correction, pick color. I'm gonna go, let's do the red one. And final copper one, right click, add mask, pick green. So there we have two ways of setting up the IDs within uh, Substance Painter and how to set that up in Blender to make it a little bit more streamlined and a little bit easier for um, applying textures. So if there's any questions, leave them in the comment section. Hit the like button if you liked the video, if you found it helpful. It helps me a lot with the YouTube algorithm. 
consider subscribing if you haven't done so already it really helps me support the channel as well and it will help me continue this into the future provide more tutorials for people that want to learn new software and i really appreciate it it's a way of saying thank you to me um a non-monetary way so i do pre appreciate all of you i love all of the kind comments uh, i have a discord set up as well and you can also download some free models over on sketchfab all the links will be in the description Take care, have a lovely day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.